الرحمن الرحيم ما المسيح ابن مريم إلا رسول قد خلت من قبله الرسل وأمه صديقة كانا يأكلان الطعام انظر كيف نبين لهم الآيات ثم انظر أن يفكون صدق الله صدق الله من رزيم Mr. Chairman and brother people naturally become inquisitive they would like to know how does it come about that a Muslim is expounding biblical prophecies is dealing with Islamic subjects from the Christian point of view that, my, that he might be able to appeal to the Christians where did he get this knowledge from I did make some indication in the beginning of my lecture tour that I was working in a country shop and across the shop from where I was there was a Christian mission, Adam's Mission Station, where missionaries were being trained. And these missionaries were coming into the shop where I was working, selling sugar and salt, handkerchief, flour. This was my work. And me and my other, there were other young uh, ex-students just left school. We were being hammered by the Christians. They came along, whatever they studied, they practiced it on us. He so, said, you know, Islam was spread at the point of the sword. In other words, Muhammad forced his religion down people's throat by threatening them of chopping of their heads. He said, Muhammad copied his book the Quran from the Jews and the Christians. You know, he had so many wives and on and on. We were at the receiving end of a Christian assault, attack. And either I felt you should leave the job and run away or defend yourself. But you can't defend yourself if you have no knowledge. And I was in desperation. And Allah is Musabibul Asbab. He is the creator of opportunities. I was restless one Sunday morning, didn't know what to do. I want some reading material. There was no books to read, but I was hungry to read. So I go into my boss's warehouse, rummaging through a pile of newspapers, looking for something pleasant to read, like the Farmer's Weekly and things of that nature. And in that pile of newspapers, I come across a worm-eaten book full of mildew. And the name of that book was Izharul Haq, which means the truth revealed. At the end of this booklet, if you have received it, is the Bible God's word. There is an epilogue that how these things happen. And I mention here that this book, Izharul Haq, changed my life, my, all my experiences. You know, it has made me actually, that one book made me to come here now. And you coming to listen to me because of that one book. What one book can do? So in that book, it was written by an Arab and this Arab gentleman was trying to arm the Indian Muslims who were at that time at the receiving end of a Christian assault in India. You see, India was in the hands of the Muslims. They were ruling it. They ruled it almost a thousand years. And the British came with the superior gun power and they snatched power, dominion, rule out of our hands. And they felt, and they thought rightly, that if at any time anybody would give them trouble, it would be the Muslims. Because they had tasted power, tasted dominion, tasted rule. And once you have tasted it, you aspire to get it once more back again. So they said, if we can convert these people, if we can make them to turn the other cheek, you know, we can rule India for a thousand years. So they started pouring in the missionaries, like frogs in the rainy season into India. And they started mastering our language and wanting to debate with the Muslims. At first the Muslims were reluctant. You know, these are the, our rulers now. They have conquered us. And if we debate with them, you know, they might put us in jail, rob an island, something like that. So he says, man, leave it out. But now since they started learning our language and challenging us in our mother tongue, the Muslims were forced to accept the challenge. And Maulana Abdul Aziz of Delhi, this is I'm reading in the book, which made everything interesting to me, which brought me here. 
that Maulana Abdul Aziz of Delhi, he was forced to accept the challenge. It was a certain reverend founder who was the head of that movement, missionary movement. And according to the appointed time and date, the debate started. The reverend started the debate with requesting the Maulana. Maulana means our Sheikh or Imam in our language, you see, in the language of the Indian Muslim. He said, Maulana Sahib, telling him in Urdu, Sir, respected Maulana, get started. Start the ball rolling. So the Maulana said, you see, look, you are our elder brother. In other words, Christianity precedes Islam by 600 years. So you are 600 years senior to us. So as such, you have the first preference. Number two, he said, look, you are our guest. No doubt an unwelcome guest, but a guest at that. So as such, again, you have the first preference. So the reverend was forced to start the debate, and he started with a question. This is Maulana Sahib, speaking in Urdu. Maulana Sahib, where is your Prophet Muhammad now? So the Maulana, after a pause, he replied that he is in Jannatul Firdaus, in heaven, blessed heaven with God Almighty. Out of that answer came the second question. He said, all right, all right. Tell me now, where was he when his grandson Hussein was martyred at Karbala? So the Maulana again thought for a moment and he again replied, he was still in Jannatul Firdaus, in blessed heaven with God Almighty. Out of that answer came the third question. I'm reading this in the book. He said, all right. Now, Maulana Sahib, look, if, you, if your Muhammad was with his Allah, as you say, and while his grandson was being butchered, a shaheed at Karbala, didn't he ask his Allah for help? He said, look, my grandson is being butchered, please. Have mercy on him, save him. So there was a long pause. And the reverend couldn't hold his peace. He started stamping his feet. Come on, come on. Did you, didn't he? Didn't he ask his Allah for help? Because if somebody is bullying me, and if I have a young heavyweight champion next to me, I say, look, man, Akhi, please, man. you know, <laughs> help me, save me. So didn't he ask his Allah for help? So after a long pause, the modern said, yes, he did. He did. So what did he say? We know he wasn't saved. What did Allah say? And there was an inordinate pause, undue pause. So the reverend again started stamping, come on, come on, what did he say? So the Maulana said, Allah cried, he cried. So what? Allah cried? He said, yes, he said, I couldn't save my own son, Jesus. How can I save your grandson? <laughs> and the debate was over. I hope the chairman doesn't take exception to your laughter. Look. We are human beings. We must have sense of humor. Sense of humor is not only laughing at other people, but we can also laugh at ourselves. There are times, and I know you have it. I, was, I remember in the city hall, Cape Town, I made a joke against the Malays. And the Malays, they enjoyed it. It was against them. I said, look, they have a sense of humor. They can also laugh at themselves. This is greatness.